Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to install Stevenson's Rocket using the automatic install option. Automatic install is the simplest way to set up SteamOS, however it will completely erase everything it finds on the first hard disk on your system, or what is detected as the first hard disk on your system, whatever that may be. If you want to build a dedicated computer with SteamOS, this is probably the correct option for you. If you want to dual boot with Windows, or you have two hard disks, or any number of other complicated uh, setups, this is definitely not the option for you. So for this demonstration I have a virtual machine created, a freshly created virtual machine with 2 gig of RAM, a 50 gig hard disk, the Stephenson's Rocket installer in the DVD drive, and everything else is more or less default except for the display setting here where the display has 3D acceleration turned on, uh, which is not the default. 3D acceleration is needed for Steam Big Picture to work, so that's why that option is turned on. So I'm going to go ahead and power on the system. So if you recall we're going to go with the automated install and you will want to watch the second video in my tutorial series if you want to see how the expert install mode works. Rescue mode is used to recover from a recovery partition on your system uh, after it's been installed if you manage to completely break your, uh, your SteamOS install such that it won't boot anymore. So this is the SteamOS installer. It, I'll see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. It is basically a, uh, a modified version of the installer from Debian Linux. Um, what the automatic install does is it provides a, a file called a pre-seed file which pre-configures all of the settings that the installer would usually ask you about and tells the installer don't ask the user about these, just use the uh, the answers that are already provided in the pre-seed file. So you can see it's already finished with partitioning, it's already finished with the, uh, the network detection, and it's already on to installing the first half of the packages on the system which constitute the base of SteamOS. Um, the, it does the installation in two sets of packages, uh, it's going relatively quickly because it's using a uh, an ISO file on my hard disk rather than a real DVD. Things are a little slower with a real DVD. They're a bit slower if you have a a slow USB stick to install from. Uh, they should be this fast if you have a a very good modern USB 3 USB stick. But uh, the the kinds of cheap USB sticks that I tend to buy uh, are much slower than this for installation. So you can see it's configuring the first set of packages, running through the list very quickly. Relatively quickly. Installing the, uh, the Linux image, that's the, uh, the actual Linux kernel itself, the main part of, uh, of SteamOS. Uh, this is worth an explanation. Uh, any of the packages with DKMS at the end, so there's this Broadcom one here, there'll be one for NVIDIA and one for uh, FGLRX, which is the ATI 3D driver. Um, these are cases where a, a device driver on the system is not provided uh, as open source software in the Linux kernel itself. Uh, usually this is from big companies that don't want to share their driver source with the Linux community, uh, like NVIDIA and ATI. And because Linux is open source, there's a licensing requirement for drivers uh, which prevents companies from distributing uh, drivers for a Linux kernel without source code. So as a workaround for that, the DKMS system allows 
uh, chunks of driver source code to be distributed to end users and then those chunks of source code are turned into working drivers uh, when the user boots the system. Uh, by doing that it means no user who buys a Steam box from uh, Scan or Alienware or Materiel.net or any of these Steam box providers, uh, they will never receive a fully finished NVIDIA driver because if they did there would be a, a copyright problem with the Linux kernel. Instead what they receive is uh, most of the Linux driver and a piece of source code and that source code is turned into the last piece of the driver uh, on the end user's computer the first time they boot it up. So you never receive that driver from uh, from Alienware etc meaning they don't have uh, legal problems with having given you that driver. All they've given you is uh, the pieces that can be distributed and some source code and the fact that you've turned that source code into a working driver is your problem and not theirs. Uh, this, this is also used for cases where a driver is simply not of high enough quality to go into the, the Linux kernel itself even though it might be open source. So you'll find a number of, um, of drivers over time get distributed as DKMS packages um, rather than trying to shoehorn them into the Linux kernel when the the drivers don't meet quality standards. So uh, I've had to prepare DKMS packages before for a, uh, a USB network card for example which didn't have a driver in Linux but did have a driver that was open source available. So the install is actually nearly finished at this point. It's uh, getting to the end of the first of the second set of packages. Sorry, uh, these are for desktop mode. Um, when you run Steam OS, much as Steam Big Picture mode is the focus, Valve also encourage you to uh, to enable desktop mode, which basically gives you a fully working desktop Linux computer and um, I wouldn't recommend using um, using SteamOS as your main desktop OS but uh, desktop mode at least gives you some some functionality you wouldn't otherwise have. Uh, okay the install is finished and it's rebooting. So the first thing that happens is it will boot into a desktop and it will ask us to download Steam automatically. So this will inevitably be in the wrong resolution. Unfull screen it, full screen it again. Okay. So you definitely want to read every word of this license agreement because license agreements are always fascinating. Uh, once you've read it, accept the terms and hit OK. This will download Steam from uh, from the internet, uh, unpack it, and a number of the steps in the official Valve uh, SteamOS install guide are obsolete now. So you'll notice we didn't have to log in as the Steam user with the password Steam or anything like that. This is all automated now, uh, courtesy of the latest changes to Valve's installer. So once that gets extracted, it'll do some unpacking because apparently those are different things. Okay, so Steam is installed. All we have to do is quit Steam and wait a couple of minutes while the, uh, the installer wakes up and finishes the last few steps. So what it's going to do now, once it wakes up, is reboot us into the recovery partition software where it will take a copy of the current state of the hard disk. Uh, just in case we ever break it in the future, we can recover that partition either from the boot menu or by loading the, uh, 
the install CD up again and choosing rescue mode from the menu. This will also be in the wrong resolution. Apparently VMware isn't very good at remembering the right resolution for things, so I have to keep unfull screening and refill screening whenever the resolution changes in the uh, virtual machine. Okay, am I sure I want to create a backup? Yes, I'm sure. Why? Enter. So there's about two and a half gig of disk space used on a default SteamOS install. It's going to back those up into a file on a dedicated recovery partition. Uh, it takes about a minute and a half in the virtual machine to do that. Okay, the image has been created, it'll just back up some other details about the system and ask us what to do next, where the answer is we want to reboot. So reboot, enter, and it will start up SteamOS. Now the first time you start SteamOS uh, is much slower than normally because it has to recompile those DKMS driver packages I mentioned earlier. So it'll come up with preparing hardware drivers on the screen. Uh, those of you with Intel graphics cards probably won't see this screen. You'll just see a big SteamOS logo in the middle. There are technical reasons why there's a text boot screen for people using the, uh, the closed source drivers and a graphical boot screen for people using the open source drivers. It's not very exciting. a little bit crackly on the virtual machine, but there you go. Welcome to Steam Big Picture. So finish up the final steps. And this is your SteamOS login screen. Now I mentioned desktop mode earlier. That's quite easy to get into. We go into the settings, interface, and tick that box. And from now, if you hit exit, whether you're logged in or not, you've got return to desktop, which will give you a standard Linux desktop. So from here you can do things like run uh, a web browser, uh, and not much other than that. But at the very least, you can get advice from people 
get online, uh, do whatever you need to, and then when you're done in here, just click Return to Steam. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Uh, remember that there are other videos for more complicated system setups if you need them. So um, go ahead and watch those if you need to. Thank you.